Okay, I, very good afternoon, very good morning, depending where you are. Um, um, I'm sorry, I cannot hear what you are saying, but uh, uh, I don't know what is the technical issue, but I will try to do my best today to deliver this presentation with the resources that I have. Um, well, I say good morning or good afternoon, depending where you are located. And today has been a very complicated day. Um, I have been preparing this presentation for quite a while, but today I have some issues in the lab. So hopefully it will not affect uh, the presentation, but without further delay, let me start this um, presentation that is called Understanding Grid Forming Control for Inverter Based Resources. And the idea of this presentation is covering two very interesting aspects um, related to theory and also related to practical aspects. So let me start with a short agenda. Um, this, this presentation is quite, quite ambitious in terms of time, and I will try to put inside this time slot um, what I prepared for you, okay? We will start, we will start with a very, simple, uh, a very simple introduction about understanding the synchronous machine. Because um, believe it or not, the synchronous machine is the fundamental um, electromechanical conversion device in the electrical power system today. And what we are trying to do with the power converters is basically emulate or mimic some of the functionalities and the properties of the synchronous machine. So we will start with this very simple introduction. Then we will have, again, a very simple and very quick uh, review about power electronics, and especially because I need some aspects related to uh, modeling. And then I will go into grid forming. And I must tell you, this presentation today is quite interesting because we are, um, we are in a transition. We are moving from an era that we have not been standardized and we are moving into a standardized era. So for that reason, for that reason today, I will talk about the past, about the present and what will be the future. Then I will show you some aspects regarding modeling and simulation, uh, considering the integration of inverter-based resources with the electrical power system. Then I will talk some, uh, some aspects related to modeling grid forming control in the pre-standardization era. Then I will show you some uh, elements about standardization, especially related to the Great Britain system. And then we will go for the practical stuff. I will start with offline simulations. I will show you some models that they are already included in the famous power system analysis software that is called uh, Power Factory, uh, Power Factory, Dixil and Power Factory. Then I will go for real time simulation. And this presentation, there are many people here that they are interested in um, uh, grid forming control and grid forming models, especially for real time simulation. And I will start with the simple one that is the grid connected voltage source converter working as grid following. And then I will go to one of the, um, one of the control scheme for the grid forming and that is the virtual synchronous machine. I was initially thinking about presenting both frameworks, the framework coming from my colleagues from Typhoon Hill and also Opal RT. However, a few minutes ago, I lost the connection to the lab. So in terms of time, I will be running just a Typhoon Hill demonstration today, okay? Well, let's start this presentation. And we need to understand, we need to understand that the main component, the main electromechanical component inside the electrical power system is the synchronous machine. And the synchronous machine has been for more than 100 years around. It's a perfect, it's a very, ele a very elegant electromechanical conversion device. 
you must be aware the classical structure of the synchronous machine. You can see on the left hand side over there, there is a cross section of electrical machine. You can see over there that we have the stator and also we have the rotor. We have the, the stator and also we have the rotor. However, what is important is that inside the electrical machine, inside the electrical machine, in the rotor, we are applying DC current to the field winding, and we have this static and constant magnetic field that is located on the rotor. And when the rotor spins or rotates at any specific rotational speed, well, we are inducing, we are inducing some voltages on the stator. However, if this machine is connected to an electrical power system, of course, this stator is connected to the electrical power system. So the AC voltage signals and the frequency of that signal is a very interesting situation because it's the combination of what is happening inside the machine and what is happening on the electrical power system. For the moment, I will assume, I will assume that the, uh, the electrical power system is something that is extremely strong. We can assume that is an infinity boost bar. So the stator, the magnetic field related to the stator, will be rotating at constant speed and numerically equally to the synchronous speed. Well, but this is in terms of magnetic field. And everyone in this presentation know that this magnetic field can be transferred into voltages. The internal voltage of the synchronous machine, and we can say that this is the voltage coming from the network. And the angle between these voltages is identical to the angle between those magnetic fields. We can call that delta, or basically is the load angle, or the angle that is representing the relative position between the voltages or the magnetic field. However, this angle is extremely important because when we are trying to emulate the behavior of the electrical machine using power converters, we need to deliver this kind of angle in order to create one of the very important features of the synchronous machine. Let me explain the following. When we have, when we have two synchronous machines, well, we can have two different synchronous machines, both of them in the same reference system, we can assume that this is the constant speed, this is the synchronous speed, and one machine can be delivering some amount of power, and that is basically related with the internal angle of those machines. So in a steady state, in a steady state, both rotors are rotating at the same speed, and that speed is identical to the synchronous speed. And during any transient, during any transient, well, the rotor speed of those of those machines can change and also this angle, this rotor position can change. And what is very important that you understand is that when those rotor position change or those internal angle change, well, the active power that is delivered by those machines are affected. I really like this very simple diagram because this really simple diagram allow me to show you some of the very basic and um, basic simple and also straightforward functionalities of the synchronous machine. As you can see over here, we have two synchronous machines connected to a bus bar, and there is a load over here. In a steady state, in a steady state, the power that is moving through those transmission lines are defined by the voltages, magnitude of the voltages and is also related with the inverse value of the reactance. But as you can see over here, those angle, the angle of those boost voltages are affecting the power flow. So it's very interesting that you understand that the power flow that is provided, the active power flow that is provided by a synchronous machine and the active power flow through the transmission system depend of the internal voltages, but also depend of those angles. To be honest, those angles are the most important factor because they can define direction and also they can affect in a very different ways the power flow. In fact, that angle is what we use to define the transient stability. 
But now what we need to understand is that the synchronous machine during during a dynamic process is described by the classical swing equation. And the swing equation is basically a relationship between the angle of the machine, and this is a second order differential equation, and this second order differential equation is related with the ratio or the relationship between the mechanical power and the electrical power. But also you must remember that the synchronous machine, they are equipped with several controllers. In this presentation, we are not interested on the reactive power, but the synchronous machine has something called the AVR. And the AVR is basically what allows the machine to control the magnitude of the internal voltage. And as a consequence, the voltage at the terminals. However, the governor is quite interesting because the governor has uh, some dynamics but what is extremely important for this presentation is the famous governor troop. Because the famous governor's troop is what allows the machine to redispatch after a sudden load increase or decrease in order to reestablish the balance between generation and demand. So with this very simple introduction, I just try to tell you that the internal angle of the ma synchronous machine has a strong effect in different aspects. Dynamic, when we are using the, the swing equation, steady state, when we are using the droop control. So what we need to now understand is that the synchronous machine, the synchronous machine is providing several services, many services that we didn't consider before. So some of those, some of those um, services are related with frequency control, with inertia, with fault currents, with system strengths and voltage control. It's not only inertia. So that is one of the motivation behind this concept of grid forming. Because as we are in integrating more and more power converters, and those classical power converters, they have different features to the synchronous machine, well, making the power converter look or work close to the behavior of the synchronous machine can enhance the mm, system frequency response and all those services that I was talking about. But what is the issue? Well, the issue is that we are having more power electronics and less synchronous machine. So power electronics is the core or the center of the new era in the electrical power system. Power electronics has been around everywhere for many decades. Power electronics has been on the demand side, has been on the transmission side, using the HBDC system, fax, and so on. And also most recently in distribution and also to the customers. However, what is interesting is that this grid connected power converter is basically what is defining the behavior of the, the, the new inverter based resources. And power electronic is a quite interesting, is a quite interesting engineering field because it's combining electronic power and control. And to be honest, combining electronic power and control require a very good understanding of the different fields in order to make this happen. So a classical power converter, a classical power converter, we have what we call the power converter that is basically this device over here when we locate the commutation devices. We have a set of sensors and those sensors send signals to the controller. And here is where the money is because the controller is basically what is doing, what is mimicking or what is defining the behavior of the power converter. So in this presentation, I will talk about a bit on the power converter and the switches and also to the filter related to the power converter because it's really relevant for the modeling and simulation. But also I will discuss, and that is the core of this presentation, control techniques for the power electronic converters. So here you can see, you can see the classical control loops that you can find in a typical or classical power electronic converter. We have here a voltage source converter created with several switches and inside those switches we have here several signals coming from the 
out controllers. We have reactive power controller, we have active power controller, we have DC power controller, but the most important thing is that the old technology that we call today grid followers, they need a synchronization mechanism in order to work. What I'm trying to tell you is when you are using synchronous machine, all the synchronous machines are working together and they are trying to be together with the concept of synchronization. They try to be synchronized all the time, even when we have a disturbance. And that is a very important property, but that is natural in the synchronous machine. In a synchronous machine, you have a natural behavior that try to make synchronization between the machine and the grid. But in power converters, we need to create that synchronization. And that synchronization is very simple. If we have an AC voltage from the grid, well, we use this piece of equi the equipment, this device over here. In the past, used to be a device, and today is just a few lines of codes inside the controller. And that is the very well-known PLL. What I am trying to tell you is that the majority of the install power electronic converters, inverter-based resources, for instance, the PV systems, they are using, they are using PLL as synchroniz a synchronization mechanism. And this PLL and this PLL, what it's doing is basically defining how the converter need to produce the currents that they are injecting into the system. And basically this approach, basically this approach, what you can see over there is that the classical converters that we are using for, for PV systems, they are basically current source converters because they can be modeled using just a, a current source in parallel with one impedance. However, we are in this class today, we are in this seminar today in order to talk about the most recent advancement or the most recent development on power converter, specifically the grid forming. Now, the big question that we have is, when we want to create a model of grid forming or any converter, what do we need to create? What do we need to model? Well, you need to, you need to create models in different components. You need a model for the filter that is installed in this power electronic converter, in this inverter. You need, to, you need to make a model for the power converter, the switching devices inside. But also what is very, very important for this class today is that we need to create the model for those controllers over here. What I am trying to tell you is that modeling power electronics is very, very difficult because we need to create proper models to represent the full behavior of the converter, the filter, we need to include sensors and also the DC link. And finally, if you are doing integration studies, well, welcome because you need to model also the grid side. And the grid side also imposes several challenges. What is good is that our friends from the power electronic area, they already have studied a lot the different models that we can use. For instance, if we are considering the model for a power electronic converter in base inverter uh, connected to the grid, well, there are different type of filters. And those filters, they are designed in order to remove the harmonics that they are created by the switching, the switching performance of the power converter. We can have the very simple L filter, or we can have the LC filter, and also we can have what we call the LCL filter. Each one of those filters have different characteristics in terms of filter, uh, filtering harmonic characteristic. However, in this presentation today, I will not go in detail into the harmonic created by the power converters. On the other hand, we need to create a model for the the, the, the proper switching devices inside the converter. And what is extremely relevant for you is that there are many topologies, there are many topologies related with the switching devices. 
and those switching devices, each one of those topologies have different performance in terms of the devices. However, in this class today, what we are interested in is basically integration studies to the network. So what we need to do, what we need to do is create proper model for the control systems. And in this case, the control system that we are talking today are basically the grid forming and also control for the for the grid side. OK, so I will not go in full details here regarding the modeling details of the of the power converter, but this is just a basic introduction. When we are creating the model of the power electronic converter, there are different techniques. And those different techniques are related with the details that you are pretending to have. When we are talking about time domain simulations, when we are talking about time domain simulation of power electronic converters, we have the switching models, we have the sample data models, and we have the average model. Each one of them have different details, but also provide different information. And more recently, we have been analyzing large signal models, small signal models, and also creating behavioral models. Behavioral models are no new. We have been using those for facts. However, I will not cover them in this presentation. The switching models are probably the most of the high fidelity models because the switched models consider the full topology of the system, cons consider the different states con of the switching devices, and from there you use circuit analysis and establish the state variable. What you can see over here is the current produced by a bulk converter. And as you can see over here using the switch model, you can see the full time domain response of this power electronic converter, in this case a bulk converter. <coughs> Sorry. However, Time to time, we need to reduce the computational burden, and in those cases, we need to use sample data model. The sample data model is basically a model that is discrete and is creating the value or, or is obtaining the value of the state variable, but only for very specific time. And those very specific time receive the name sample data. So in this model, of course, the computational burden is less. However, the information that you can obtain from there is very limited. Finally, we have the average model, and many people publish several papers using average models. And the average model, what it's trying to find is the behavior of the state variable, for instance, in this case, the current, but in this case, is the average value over the time of that state variable. Again, this can be running very fast in a very low computer, um, low burden machine, a long computational power machine. <coughs> However, the problem is that you are, you are neglecting a lot of information. Now, the question is, how the different power system analysis software, how do they model the power electronic converter? And here I have just a very limited, a very limited presentation. As my plan today was to use real-time simulation, I am presenting here the model that you can find inside the Typhoon Hill. Inside Typhoon Hill, you can find the inverter. In this case, it's a two-level, three-phase inverter. And in this case, you can have the full representation, including the full details of the switches. Also, if you are planning to use Opal RT, you must be aware that Opal RT is connected with Simulink. And inside Simulink, you have different type of power electronic converters. In this case, this inverter over here, you can define the model type between switching devices, switching function, average model, considering rectifier or not rectifier mode. What I am trying to tell you is, is that MATLAB Simulink has a very configurable um, model for the power electronic converter. In both cases, 
Typhoon Hill and also Opera RT, they are running AMT simulations, they are running simulations based on instantaneous values, and you can have almost the same level of detail between them. Now, when you are going to Power Factory, in Dixieland Power Factory is a very interesting software because Dixieland Power Factory is quite used for the classical positive sequence RMS simulations. However, inside the software, we have different levels of model for the power electronic converters. If you are familiar with the software, you must recognize this symbol over here. This is the, the element um, static generator. And the static generator is basically a control source. In that control source, you can control the voltage in the DQ axis. But the voltages that you are receiving on the other side, they are represented as RMS. However, if you want to have the full detail of this power electronic converter, you can use the element PWM. And if you are using the element PWM, you will have the full configuration of this uh, bridge of power electronic uh, devices. You can use half bridge, full bridge, or even multimodular converter. <coughs> well, it's time to start to talk about the control system in those power electronic converters. And now the topic today is related with grid forming. And grid forming has been a very, very active area in terms of research in the past, in the past decade. Um, we can identify that we are in two different areas. Five years ago, 10 years ago, we were in an area that I call before standardization. I call this area before standardization because some efforts have been done in order to create a standard to define the dynamic behavior of the power electronic converters. But this harmonization effort that is finally impacting the grid code has been very slow. And we are right now probably on the starting moments of the standardization, of the standardization of the grid forming. And there are several working groups in SIGRE, in IEEE, and so on, working in this, in this sense. So the harmonization journey has been very, very, very long. The first inverter-based resources, the first requirement for grid code probably started in 2000, 2005. And I will not go in the full details of this, but it, what is very, very important is that in 2000, in, in, in 2020, the European Union start to create the network code requirements for generators. And in this case, we start to define uh, the, mm, the models or the characteristics, sorry, the requirements for the power electronic converter based resources. Two very important aspects, two very important aspects has been the inclusion, the development of two very important documents. In the IEEE, there is, there is a standard for uh, interoperational, interoperativity of inverter-based resources, and that is the starting point to define the connection between the inverter-based resources the requirement of the inverter bear resources connected to the transmission system. However, in the previous two years, the research and development of the standardization has been quite, quite fast. And here you have some very relevant documents of 2020, 2021, 2022, and 2023. As we are today on 2023, I will suggest that my discussion will be focused in three, the three most recent documents. In the case of the Great Britain, the National Grid Electricity System Operator, they publish a document that is called the Great Britain Forming. And that is basically the specification of the requirement for the grid forming inverters to be installed in the GB system. In the case of Australia, Australia has been developing a lot of things related to the grid forming. And there is a voluntary specification for grid forming, 
and also Fingrid have done that. So in the pre in the pre standardization area in the pre the, um, in the pre standardization area we consider the grid forming as the converter that is behaving, behaving like a voltage source and the controller that is making this uh, power converter behave like a voltage source is what we call typically grid forming However, this document from National Grid already specify what we call the GB grid forming inverter. The GB grid forming inverter, as you can read over here, is basically a control technique. It's a control technique that control or determine the amplitude and the phase angle of the internal voltage source. So the grid forming control in the case of the GB system is basically the model that we considered for many, many years before. And that is basically a internal voltage source with an angle. So that is the GBGFI. However, if we look in details inside the document, if we look in details inside the document, what we can see over here are the most important requirements. And the grid forming in the GB system must provide several services, active power, uh, active power control based on power, active control based on droop, active inertia power, and active damping power. What I am trying to tell you is that the grid forming converter in the GB system must be able to produce active power depending of different of different situations but based on the responses or, or based on the responses coming from the control and the active signal for instance the active inertia power is basically based on the rock off of the signal the active damping power try to replicate the field windings that you can find in any synchronous machine. The active control based on droop power is basically mimicking the droop that you can find in a synchronous machine. So without further, without further discussion about this, already National Grid um, defined the control loops related to the grid forming GB grid forming inverter. And as you can see over here, the grid forming will include inertia, it will include droop, it will include damping, and this damping also open the possibility of being uh, damping related with uh, inter area oscillations. Okay? Well, I will not take so much time for you here. But what I want to do is straight away go to the modeling and simulation of the inverter-based resources in the electrical power system. Uh, the situation of modeling power electronic converters in the electrical power system, in large power system, is a quite challenging situation right now. And something that we discover is that the traditional approach, the traditional approach of modeling and simulation start to fail to reproduce the most important, sorry, to reproduce the most important behaviors. So what I want to tell you is that the classical approach of using RMS simulations and AMT simulation, that approach is still valid. However, when we are talking about the waveform simulation, that is what we refer classically as AMT simulation, we can have two levels of detail including the switching model of the power electronic converter or ignoring the switching model. And this is basically the average model. And regarding phaser model simulations, we have multi-frequency multi models and we have single frequency models. When we are using single frequency model is because we are assuming they are not harmonics inside the network and the simulation is done considering the rate frequency. Well, what we have discovered is that positive sequence simulations, they are, not, they are not able to replicate, they are not able to replicate many of the phenomena that we have at the 
power electronic com uh, dominated system. Well, I am running out the time, and what I will, what I want to do right now is, I would like to show you something that we have done in the lab regarding modeling and simulation of uh, grid forming control for real time simulation. Well, uh, let me show you the following. If we if we consider real-time simulation, there are two very well-known frameworks, the one from Opal RT and the one from Typhoon Hill. Today, I have issues with the connection uh, to the lab, so I will be focusing, I will be focusing only on Typhoon Hill. Inside Typhoon Hill, we have the possibility, and let me go to Typhoon Hill Control Center and show you the, um, and show you the model of this is this is a grid uh, this is a grid uh, following uh, controller okay um, as you can see over here on the top we have here at the top we have the uh, power electronic components we have here a full detail of switches and, do and diodes inside the power electronic converter we have here the lc filter we have a power transformer and we have an infinity boost bar. And below, what I am presenting over here, they are basically uh, all the control loops related to the calculations and control loop related to the converter. As you can see over here, the control is realized using DQ0. Initially, we take the measurements, voltage from ABC and convert into the DQ. We do the same with the currents, and then we go to a current controller. However, the reference of that current controllers, they are coming from the power calculation. What I will do now is, if everything is fine, I, I am compiling this model, and after I compile this model, I will be able to run the simulation using the Typhoon Hill SCADA. So in this case, let me, let me now open the SCADA. As you can see over here, right now we are uh, loading the model inside the real-time simulator. And when finished loading the model, we will be able to run this simulation. And basically in this simulation, because this is a grid type converter, as you can see over here, this is a grid type converter. I started the real-time simulation. In the grid type converter, the, the mechanism that I am using to modify the power and see the dynamic performance of the power electronic converter is basically modifying the reference, okay? As you can see, this is the current right now, and you can see the terminal voltage, in this case, is around 100 kb. What I will do is increase the active power to 20 megawatts, and now you will see over here a step going to near 20 megawatts and now you can see how the voltage terminal voltage drop and you can see over here that the active power is around 20 megawatts okay let me increase a bit more the power let me go to 80 megawatts when i increase more you can see in few seconds you can see the step the power is going up 77 um 78 and now around 80 megawatts, you can see that the current over here is around four, uh, 450 uh, uh, amps, okay? But let me show you this that probably could be interesting. Let me reduce the active power to zero. And now let me show you the use of the reactive power of this power converter to modify, to modify the voltage. Right now, the reference for the uh, reactive power is zero. I can increase to, let me say, 50 uh, MBR. And as you can see over here, the reactive power is going down. And right now you can see, oh, no, let me, let me go here, zero here. And let me go zero here again, yes. Okay, now both of them are in zero. And uh, let me put 20 MBR. Yes, you can see that the reactive power is going to 20. 
the current is going up to 115k uh, amps and you can see over here that the voltage increase but what's happen if we consume reactive power well if we consume reactive power you will see that this voltage now should we going down you can see over here 99.96 okay well, let me start this simulation. This is the simulation related to the grid following. I know this presentation is related with grid forming. So for grid forming, I will use in the chapter number three of this beautiful book over here, real time simulation and hardware in the loop testing using uh, Typhoon Hill. And in this book, the chapter number three was created with my friend and colleague um, Jose, Jose Miguel Riquelme Dominguez. And basically what we are doing is using the full detail model of the two level inverter. And we are connecting this inverter to two loads and we can control the switch operation of this, of this power of these breakers. And you will see how the power change and also the frequency. And the reason is because this power electronic converter is equipped, let me go here, is equipped with the swing equation. In this case, we are using a virtual synchronous machine and the virtual synchronous machine is modeled inside the converter. So when there is a power imbalance between the set point and the measurement, well, we will have some changes on the frequency, okay? Now what I will do is I will run this simulation over here. And as you can see, initially the switches are open. So as the switches are open, the active and reactive power is zero and the frequency is around 60.7. However, if we close the load number one, the load number one is 1.8 megawatts. And you can see over here how the active and reactive power increase and the frequency goes down to around 60 Hertz. As you can see over here, there is a frequency drop. And in this case, the frequency drop is following the swing equation, considering the acceleration constant that we put in the virtual, in the virtual synchronous machine model. Now, let me close the second load. And the second load is quite interesting because you can see over here that they are a bit more active power. So the frequency goes down to 50.8, around 50.8. However, what is interesting is that there is a compensation between the reactive power of both loads. And you can see that the total, you can see that the total reactive power is around zero. And now what I will do is let me open one of those loads in order to see back the performance of the frequency and the active and reactive power. And we are almost finishing this, this presentation. And I believe I already finished this video here. Yes. Okay, now we open the switch number one and you can see over here how the frequency goes up. And here the reactive power goes down because the reactive power consumption of the load number two is minus 1.5 MBR, okay? Okay, I need to close this presentation. Sorry that I overstep my, my, my time by five minutes. And don't take me bad, but let me... Um, let me close this presentation with a slide that probably not many people will like to do. Um, when we are talking about modeling of future inverter uh, based dominated power systems, there are many people that they are very interested on the simulation tool. And the reality is that the simulation tool is just pressing the button. The reality is that modeling mm, dominated, fully dominated inverter based power system require very good understanding about the mathematical uh, uh, background and also understanding the modeling and the control systems. So my, my suggestion, because this, this, this presentation is for students mainly, 
I highly suggest that you be more involved on understanding the physics and the math behind those converters and then try to go for the models. And when you are ready with the models, well, you can start to use the simulation tool to identify the performance or to analyze the performance of the electrical system. So this is my takeaway here. And well, this is the end of the presentation on understanding the grid forming control and inverter based resources. I'm really sorry that I, I didn't cover the excellent power factor in this one. Probably it was extremely ambitious. I prepared for two hours, sorry. <laughs> it was my fault. Thank you, Arturo. I don't know if you have any question. I cannot hear you. I don't know what is happening here. Let me try to modify the volume. Uh, no.